You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. We're living in a very dangerous time right now, and liberalism has lost their cotton-picking mind. The Trump folks, if they found out how we knew what we knew about the Trump staff dealing with Russians, that they would try to compromise those sources and methods. Nobody ever said anything about resisting Obama. They went at him on legitimate arguments. I really do believe that much of what you saw coming out of Trump's mouth was a play from Putin's playbook. Welcome to the Abolitionists' Roundtable, your all-access pass to exposing fake news, the resistance, and the global elite's shadow government undermining American progress. Be a part of the conversation at 734-822-1600. And now, your all-American hosts, Del Marsh and Phil Stargell. And good morning. This is the Abolitionist Roundtable of Michigan, and this is your co-host, Phil Stargell, and sitting across from me, Dale Marsh, co-host <laughs> Dale Marsh, and he's in the house. And, uh, and we are grateful, eternally grateful, for our guest in the studio this morning that's going to sit in with us. Uh, he's like, uh, I, would, I would be like on the Rush Limbaugh show. What did he call it? The, uh, the Observer? The, yeah. <laughs> the Official Observer? observer of the Abolition oh, Roundtable? Yeah. yeah, how about yeah, that? Uh, good morning, Gary. How are you good doing? Official morning, Observer and my, and my official driver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. So, okay. so well, welcome. Welcome to the show, and, okay. uh, and it's great to have you. <laughs> and, Dale, uh, good morning to you. Good morning. To good morning, Phil. And so we uh, we uh, just happen to have you know uh, in uh, the thing that I'm going to start the uh, the show off with this morning is uh, in in, uh, in 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 lieu of protecting ourselves and being able to protect ourselves uh, with the the thing that happened in California with Kate Steinle, you know, and uh, it, it it seems that. And I just want to say, I'm still ticked off about the outcome of that trial. And I hope, I hope, I want to say this, I hope that the Justice Department can act. I mean, because it's been very slow. They've been very slow in, in acting about this. But how, what is the response of the federal government to one of its citizens being killed by a non-citizen and then walking out of the court and almost thumbing his nose at the public? So, what is the the response of the uh, the federal government? What should be the response of the federal government? We know that when Rodney King was beaten in uh, California, we know that when uh, they cracked uh, uh, the head of uh, uh, Congressman, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, well, yeah, you talking on about the, a buddy? The, you talking about a buddy? Yeah. Um, uh, John, anyway. You talking about John Lewis? John Lewis, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. When they cracked his head, I mean, they, 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 they responded, didn't they? Uh, yeah. They responded with a civil rights violation. The federal government responded. Um, but better than that, uh, the, uh, the, the Republican uh, Party, uh, you know, rallied uh, uh, to... Uh, resume the the march and a lot of people forget that mm -hmm. they think that uh that there was no republican party in the in the south when that when the civil rights struggle was being waged mm -hmm. but if it weren't for the republican party in in alabama uh, that you know it wouldn't have been uh uh any 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 results of uh, the civil rights legislation but but there was a response from the federal government. So what's, what's holding up the response to, to Kate Steinle? I heard that they were uh, looking at charges of um, um, a felon in possession of a firearm. And that, that could result in a sentence of up to 10 years. I want to know why is it that uh, that 
that it doesn't qualify to have charges placed on this gentleman like they placed on the policemen that were involved in the beating of uh, Rodney King. I mean, those guys got some serious time. Mm -hmm. And it was very swift in coming. I mean, so I want to know what is it, is, is it, this right here should tell you that there is a discrepancy between how non-citizens are treated and how citizens of this country are treated. There seems to be a bending over backwards to protect the rights of non-citizens and no effort at all to protect citizens of this country. And that's why I, I, I say I'm angry and I'm uh, uh, very disappointed in, uh, in the response from the federal government, the Department of Justice. You know, uh, we, we've seen to have uh, uh, some turmoil going on in, uh, in the, in the, in, in the uh, Department of Justice in the federal, at the federal level. But anyway, there is a, a law that uh, passed through the House of Representatives, and it's called the Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act. And uh, what, what that does is it, it says that if you are licensed to carry a, a, a firearm in the state of Michigan, you should be able to, to carry that firearm in New York, in California, and some of these other repressive <coughs> zones commonly known as sanctuary cities. You know, I, you know, and I just would like to know one thing. Who are they using these sanctuary cities to protect these illegals from? Is it from us or is it from the government that they came from? Mm -hmm. what, who, what is the purpose of a sanctuary city? Mm -hmm. Now, I can understand the true... Uh, the, the, the original intent of a, a sanctuary city, it was to protect black Americans in the South that were living under the burden of Jim Crow law. But now we seem to be honoring the, the Democrat Party and their idea of uh, democracy because it seems that sanctuary cities are just another form of Jim Crow law. So that's, that's, that, that's, uh, uh, so the, if you, if you have a city or a state in, in the case of California, that is, uh, doing all of the things that most people want in a, uh, in a, in a Jim Crow state, the same thing is being done today. It is Jim Crow law in California. Now, what did Jim Crow law do? Jim Crow law established the fact that there was a difference between how you treat white people and black people. So it's a difference in how you treat illegals and how you treat American citizens. They can break the law almost with impunity. If you can kill somebody, and nobody punishes you, that's Jim Crow law to me. That's what it was in, in, in the South. And then they, they want to tell you that it is, uh, uh, they say that, uh, that when a, a policeman in New York, in the case of uh, the guy that, they, that, uh, that was wrestled to the ground and they said it was a chokehold and he died, they say that was systematic racism, that the, that the department was practicing systematic racism. I say to you that it's systematic in California. The county, the state, and the city of, of, of Los Angeles, of, of San Francisco, in that case, in the state of California. It is systematic. Now, all across the state of California, that there's a difference in the way you treat illegals and the way you treat American citizens. That is systematic racism, and that's Jim Crow law. So that's my rant for the day. <laughs> and, well, and they've given they've given a special group of people special rights.
Yes. Is the bottom line. And that's Jim Crow law. That's what what they did. They've given them special That's what they did in the South. And those 11 former uh, states of the Confederacy, they made it so it was a difference in the way that white people were treated on every law, on everything, public accommodation. There was a place for black people and there was a place for white people. In California, there's a way that they are treated. If you walk into a, 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 a voting booth in California, you know, you can, you can vote, you know, like everybody else. But, th- but there's no distinction between them. Mm-hmm. So, to me, that's special treatment for people that aren't, that aren't uh, eligible to vote. And they tell you, oh, no, there's no, nobody voting in, in, uh, in California that shouldn't be voting. Well, <laughs> any idiot would know that if I can, if I got an interest I'm trying to protect and I can protect that interest by going in and voting, then I, and nobody asks me to prove that I'm uh, eligible to vote, well, that's different treatment for people. Whereas you and me, we have to, have to uh, prove who we are before we can get uh, a, 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 um, a voting card. So, yeah, it's systematic. So why is it that, that, that the only thing that they want to uh, come at us with about racism is that it's systematic, that uh, there are systematic uh, reasons for uh, people to abuse people if they're, if they're, if they're black, uh, and, and, and nobody says anything about the fact that maybe he broke the law. Well, that's the same thing with this guy. He broke the law. He's got a history. Yes. Too, this yes. guy. And yeah. that, that history was, was uh, whitewashed. It wasn't allowed to be presented to the courts. Now, let's just take another famous case in California, O.J. Simpson. How many times did, did, they, did they talk about how he smacked his wife around? Yeah. I was wondering whether or not they were trying O.J. Simpson for wife abuse other than murdering his wife. I mean, that, you know, so, but at the same time, I mean, they didn't hold back any of that information like they did with this guy. They yeah. held back the information about how many times he had broken the law by breaking back into the country, illegally trespassing on uh, American like, soil. It's like everything else. It's unconstitutional. They're, they're giving special rights to people that aren't even citizens. Yes. And it's uh, everything else that's on, they do that's unconstitutional. Well, the, uh, in, you know, if we get into it, the Democrat Party is the party of lawlessness. They right. care nothing for the Constitution. They care nothing for existing law except the ones that they make. Again, that's, that's Jim Crow law. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but what I was uh, getting at with the concealed carry reciprocity is that uh, today we uh, should be able to uh, take a step in uh, protecting ourselves when we venture into those sanctuary cities. Now, I don't think a, a, a gun uh, permit would have uh, helped uh, in this situation. But at the same time, there are many, many people that come into places like New York, Chicago, and, and things like that that have no protection when they go in to, to visit people and stuff like that. And there are, there are numerous occasions when, uh, when people are taken advantage of, robbed, uh, mugged, and all kind of things because they just didn't know the danger that they were in if they were in specific places that they maybe shouldn't have been. Uh, and that can happen, and uh, nothing uh, nothing helps more so in a situation like that than to be able to protect yourself. So uh, it, it what it says here is in a resounding show of support for the Second Amendment, uh, Second Amendment, the U.S. House of Representatives on Wednesday passed a legislative package that included H.R. 38. The Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act of 2017 and H.R. 4477, the Fix NICS Act of 2017. 
the bipartisan vote. Now that tells you something there. There's some bipartisan action here. So, uh, you know, the, the Democrats have for years been able to, to just bogart their way into things like uh, banning assault rifles, so-called assault rifles, and, and uh, jacking up the price of bullets and ammunition and stuff like that to where they are almost un, uh, unbuyable. And, uh, and, and, and so this is something that they seen that uh, those days must be over because they crossed over the line and, and voted along with Republicans on this. And uh, so the, the bipartisan vote of 231 to 198 advanced a measure that would allow law-abiding Americans who are eligible to carry a concealed handgun under the law of a state to do so in all other U.S. states and territories that recognize the right of their own residents to carry concealed without a doubt. This is the strongest piece of self-defense legislation to ever come before Congress. And I would applaud them. And uh, uh, if you can uh, well, if imagine. If your state is, allows open ca to carry. If yeah. the state you're going to allows you to carry, you, they'll let you carry. Yeah. What, there's, what it says. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, it's going to get to the point where open carry is going to be also pushed. Yeah. And uh, that would be a great day for me because I, I would think that if, if self-defense, uh, you know, I can understand um, people are using the the uh, the reg regulations, but that's the thing that worries me. Once you do this, you know, the federal government has more influence over over the uh who's eligible and stuff like that. They could come in and say, well, you know, uh, th this might be a little bit too much and we're going to have to regulate this and, and the open carry might be, you know, they might. So this is the worry, always the worry. When you give that power to the federal government, you know, the people that are running the federal government, that's when <laughs> that, that they, they're sitting back licking their chops trying to figure out ways and it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if the, if they get it where they're in charge of all of the states that at some point they might say well you know what it's time for us to stop this and all of that so we have to be ever vigilant of that ef effect of of this because the democrats wouldn't be joining in on this if they didn't see down the line that 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 might be a way to be, that they could actually really control things if they are in power so we have to be very, very vigilant on who we elect. And that maybe some of this will start people to understanding that, uh, that, that uh, what's in this country, what's in jeopardy is our U.S. Constitution. Our Constitution is the only thing that is capable of, of uh, saving this country and making it anywhere near like what the, uh, what the real intent of this country was, and that is the liberty of the individual, not the oppression of the majority. You know, the individual is the is the thing, and then with that, we can uh, we can make a country that is strong, and not all of this factionalism that uh, has creeped into this into this government mm -hmm. this 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 whole idea of we'll take a bunch of you over here and we'll and we'll form us up a majority i mean this is that parliamentary type rule and they that's what they want in this mm -hmm. country and we better be very careful not to allow that to happen we've got to have the well like they well like they've been picking apart these rights we have the right you know the first, yeah. the Second Amendment right to own a gun. Yes, but they pick the right apart and say, "Well, you can carry, or you can't carry. You have to conceal. You can't seal. Yes. You, yes. you can't take it here. You can take it." That was never envisioned no. in the Second Amendment, picking no. the right apart and saying what you can do if you have the right to own a gun. You yeah, know? that is uh, that is the, the the real fear that I have of uh, 
getting more involvement by, you know, making this a, a uh, basically uh, the equivalent of a same-sex marriage. I mean, it's all across every state. Right. And so the government is 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 is, is got a thing where they can not it it you know the thing that's in court right now is freedom of speech whether or not you know they can force you to to preach in the pulpit what they want you to preach see this is the same thing that they envision yeah. with the uh, with the gun uh situation if they can regulate it across the land and they're in charge we we are in jeopardy oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we had to be very careful yeah. <laughs> very. Yeah. so uh, th with that said, uh, folks, um, you know that's a warning that uh, Gary and uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, myself and Dale, yeah. we are all in agreement that uh, that this is a good day, but it's it, it's a uh, it's a cautious day, and, and let's be cautious of uh, yeah. what what lays down the road. We have to make sure that uh, that we make the next generation aware of what's in what they are in jeopardy of losing. And uh, so hopefully we can uh, we can do that because the, this young generation I, I'm not I'm not very optimistic about them <laughs> with the uh, with the enthusiasm they show for people like Bernie Sanders I mean they, oh gosh they, they're oh, willing no. to <laughs> uh, I can't take him <laughs> <laughs> but they love it you know yeah well he he mislead them pretty good uh, yeah. with with a lot of that uh, propaganda. Uh, and again, and they, they think that uh, all the goodies out there are really free. They know they're not really free. Uh, they, they parents tell them that they pay for this stuff. They know their parents pay a lot of taxes and uh, yeah. and some of those goodies they get. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, we got to be cautious about uh, uh, people like uh, Bernie Sanders. Though. Yeah. I want to get yeah. uh, to, before you know we're getting close to the bottom of the hour. I'd like to get to this uh, these phone lines. Uh, we're going to go to line one, and uh, uh, what, uh, I, I haven't got my. Let's see, that's uh, well, run them up, uh, De uh, Derek, please. Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah, this, this is Gary. Oh yeah! Hi, hi. Good morning, Gary. How Good you doing? Good morning, Gary. Good morning, guys. Hey, uh, you guys were talking about why uh, the Democrat Party wants to protect their constituents, which are the illegal aliens, because they know damn darn well that uh, they're losing their power base here in America. You know, all the governors are going Republican, and if if they lose the illegal aliens, I mean, they get thrown out of the country. They lose power. They lose power in Senate seats. They lose power in electoral college numbers. So they, they've got to keep these people here because uh, they're their base now. And uh, the same with the uh, you guys, the, not nothing personal, but the Negroes. They've got to keep them in line because they're their power base. And so they'll do whatever they need to do to keep them in check. To, to keep their power base, because that's the only thing they really got these days is, is uh, that, that fear. Yeah, and, and that, uh, again, uh, it is it is something that was warned. Uh, we were warned about uh, with the founding fathers, uh, and I mentioned it a minute ago. Factionalism. Uh, the, the the Democrats are very crafty at uh, at crafting together these these different factions of society and naming them. Uh, as minorities and bestowing all kinds of uh, civil rights on them, and uh, you know, uh, with every civil right that that uh, that is granted, there that there goes a piece of the Constitution and the rule of law. With the illegals, what you're talking about is is uh, they. I mean, they just tear up any immigration law because they want to 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 uh, to go around all of those laws. That's and, right. And then our courts are in, involved in it, too. Uh, this is uh, uh, the Abolitionist Roundtable, and if you'd like to join the conversation, that number is 734-822-1600, and we'll be back after these messages.
You're listening to the Abolitionists' Roundtable with your hosts, Dell and Phil. They're exposing the left's underground resistance while leading the charge in the fight for liberty. Join the conversation at 734-822-1600. Hello, I'm Milt, and this is Logically Speaking Uncensored, the evil power of left-wing liberal tribalism. If you try to analyze or evaluate the activities and subversive upheavals being committed across the nation by left-wing liberals, you will fail unless you understand that the master control that governs their deeds is tribalism. Tribalism, which comes from the word tribe, is defined as the beliefs, culture, and organization of people with common interests. Being a member of a tribe in and of itself is not a problem. However, the ideology of the tribe determines if it is negative or positive. Therefore, any tribe whose beliefs are predicated on the perpetuation of lies, biases, bigotry, and unjustified hatred is a negative tribe and so will be their tribalism. The Democrat Party has been and still is a negative tribe whose politics dictate acceptance without regrets or shame of anarchists, insurrectionists, outlaws, and avid anti-American militants into their domain. Left-wing liberals' influence within the Democrat Party is the catalyst for programs that corrupt the intellectual sovereignty of individuals and groups and give them a mindset of civil disobedience. Left-wing liberals are secular humanists, merchants of misery, who sanction the use of derogatory and incendiary language that assassinates the character of non-tribe members as they inflict unspeakable pain upon the society of legal Americans. Left-wing liberals and Democrats are fond of calling conservatives and Republicans racists, fascists, and Nazis, but they never call them communists because they reserve that name for themselves. Left-wing liberals share a commonality with Democrats, Communists, and Muslims in that they work collectively to divide the United States into separate enclaves that weaken the strength of incorporated unity. That is why killing Christians and Jews by Muslims is considered collateral casualties in their war against God and the United States. Tribalists demand devout loyalty to the revolution of obstruction and resistance. That is why during the inauguration of President Trump, they found no fault with rioters in Washington, D.C. or rioters in Berkeley, California. Daily, left-wing liberal tribalists who are bought and paid for by hate American traders hypocritically use the pretext of civil and human rights diversity and equality to conceal their deplorable deeds. And the most reprehensible deed of left-wing liberals is their dismissal of one's character by using pigmentation tribalism as a weapon to segregate and mislead people into believing the self-loathing myth of never-ending racism. Therefore, we the people, for our security and survival, must not ignore the evil power of left-wing liberal tribalism. I am Milt, logically speaking, uncensored, saying, think about it. And we are back. Yeah, and uh, (laughs) so... We are going to uh, go. Uh, go ahead, Dell. Uh, tell well, us a little bit just, about how you're coming. Uh, yeah, I just want to mention again. We still have. Uh, we we still have our uh, uh, stand by your friend uh, for the holidays. Uh, um, uh, campaign going on right now. Uh, friends of Dell Marsh. I'm Dell Marsh. Fight uh, against uh, cancer uh, fundraiser again. You know my friends uh, Phil, Janice, uh, Milt. Uh, and uh, Gary, if you want to go to our website at uh, artofmichigan.com, we're still uh, receiving the uh, the fundraiser um, 
uh, campaign yep. um, a donation for the fight for cancer. And if you like to write a check, you can write it to uh, uh, Del Marsh and and send it to our PO box, PO box one three five Garden City, Michigan four eight uh, one three five. Yeah, please. If you go give. to our website, you will see a uh, right on the side pillar. You will see a a um, you will see a picture. It a uh, it is a um, and uh, that picture. It'll say, please print your, your cancer fundraiser f- a flyer. You can print that out, and you can, if you were to mail it a couple of uh, b- 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 rows down, you'll see it says donate today. If you want to use your, your Visa, MasterCard, whatever you want to use, you can make a uh, donation so that we can uh, we can uh, help our friend Del Marsh, which is me for the holidays. You know, I'm, I'm fighting... Uh, this uh, this cancer that I was diagnosed with a few months ago. And so if you'd like to contribute, you can go to our website, again, artofmichigan.com, or you can mail it or click on it. You can mail it. it it'll give you our address. So either one. All right. Thank you very much. Well, thanks a lot, Dale, for that update on uh, your progress. Uh, <clears throat> so how um, uh, do you feel uh, the, the, the work is being Done. Uh, How do you think it's coming? Yet, I, I mean, I can't tell the progress yet. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, I, you know, I was a, a I was a little slow this morning. I didn't feel good, but I mm-hmm. see. You know what? I gotta go and depress myself. And uh, but during the week, uh, sometimes it's a little rough uh, getting up and uh, going to work. I still have to try to get up and and uh, go, but I really kind of limit what I do. Yeah, because I, you know, I, mm-hmm. you and I, yeah. uh, hit this this six o'clock in the morning time, uh, like, like uh, you know, like nothing. I mean, yeah. you know, I, so I know so, that it's uh, it's so uh, it's a real blessing that yes. uh, my, you know, my friend Gary here, friend at this station, all of our friend Gary stepped up and and uh, made a commitment to help me out. I appreciate it. Well, uh-huh. again, I, I want to <laughs> pass my thanks uh-huh. along to, to Gary. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, we are going to go back to the phones, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we're going to go to line two, and that's Bruno from uh, Roseville. Good morning, Bruno. Good morning. Um, Gary also drives me around. Um, <laughs> he's a, a great guy, actually. Um, anyway, I was talking about uh, how... Um, uh, Bernie Sanders lost, like, I'm 33 years old, and I was a Bernie Sanders supporter um, uh, months ago, and I have recently turned over to being a Republican, and I've lost a lot of respect for the guy. He is um, just... Socialist. <laughs> and he just, uh, his spirituality is false. He just feels like the guy just... Um, he doesn't seem to understand that, like, if we ran the country like we do run a European, uh, like, uh, Europeans run their countries, the level of socialism, um, would be obscene. Like, you would literally have to pay much higher taxes to do everything that Bernie Sanders wants everybody to do. Um, and furthermore, uh, you actually have to deal with the fact that, uh, politicians in America usually tend to figure out a ways to get a lot more graft going, um, and I'm talking about the liberal left, um, graft going than you, uh, have in European countries where it's seen as more of a, uh, being a public servant is a much more respected, uh, situation yeah you so. know the, re- the the reason why it's more much more respected and and we're getting into that here you see p- people are looking toward the government for guidance for you know for their everyday life the government was never meant to do that the, no. the, in this country no. now the rest of the country the rest of the world they have that is what they have been used to that's why it's so very uh, important that we recognize the, the threat that is illegal immigration into this country. Mm-hmm. Because once they get here, they use our laws in order to advance 
their own personal interests. And, and the Democrat Party is only too willing to do whatever it is that advances their interests in order to advance their interests. Yeah. And that interest is to continue to, to, uh, to get that vote. Yeah. Uh, so they give away the whole country if they have to. Uh, and that is the classic example yes. of factionalism. Yeah. yeah. Using uh, the factions mm -hmm. for political power. Yeah. And 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 the and the Democrat Party has been practicing that uh, that that form of of uh, politics since the early uh, 1900s or before. Yeah. It, 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 you know, I've talked about it. It's called the Curley effect. Yeah. Where they use uh, the po politics of, of taxation to to run certain demographics away from a place and encourage others to come in with the free gifts of that taxation. Yeah. Yeah, and it looked just like a uh, sanctuary city. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and we can see that uh, today. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Matter of fact, it, that's why it's very important that uh, this upcoming uh, governorship uh, uh, race coming up. We have a we have a uh, uh, a guy that's a Muslim that believe in the, the, this theory, yeah. that curly theory, which is the that sanctuary city. He wanted this to be a sanctuary yes. state. Yes. And so, uh, yeah, we, that's that's very dangerous ground right there. That uh, that this guy is running on. Well, so, it's anti-Constitution. Yeah. And well, here's the thing. Um, I actually am an immigrant, and uh, I. Uh, uh, but I did it. Uh, I did it uh, uh, legally, and it takes a while, and it's a hard-fought process. But um, yeah, I think that illegal immigrants shouldn't just get a pass and say, "Okay, so you're you're here." And, um, I mean, it, it was one thing when Reagan did it, but at that point uh, the problem had become so widespread that it was um, um, okay to do it. But um, during now the situation that you've got, you know, Syrians, we don't know who, who these people are or which people um, have anti-American and terroristic intentions. You, you, it's a little bit dangerous to just let anybody come in here who is actually, you know... But remember uh, this, the danger is not so much of the, 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 the terrorism, it's, the, it's the, the willingness to change the form of government that exists in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have is, is, and you hear people, you know, poo-poo it as if it's, if it's, as if it's uh, something that we should be ashamed of. But when you say that this country is the exception, what they mean is that the exception is we are the only country where the individual is sovereign. Where we, uh, so, but when, once you give away that sovereignty by pledging your vote, to one particular ideology like so many people have done in this country, then you take away the, the, the meaningfulness of that exceptionalism because we become just like all the other p uh, political parties around the world. We become, ex ex uh, everything that's done is done for political advantage. Right. Uh, all right. Thank you for calling this morning, too, getting up with us. Thank you. All okay. right. Thank you. We're going to go to line. Oh, it looked like we. Uh, um, yeah, we uh, yeah, and we dropped dropped a call, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, we got a few minutes, and yeah. uh, we, yeah. you know yeah. we go we'll go on to our agenda. Uh, the on the agenda, I, I want to know how many people uh, heard about the the uh, Planned Parenthood pending uh, investigation of Planned Parenthood. I got this uh, um, a couple of days ago, and it says pro-life pro activists said that a Department of Justice investigation into Planned Parenthood's practices marks a major turning point for allegations that the nation's largest abortion provider profited from the sale of abortal, aborted fetal body parts now <laughs> well, I say it's about time how long has that how, how long uh, ago did we hear 
that uh, that they, there was a, tr uh, a market going on for uh, oh, uh, a year or so. Oh yeah, no, no, it's been oh, it's yeah. been longer than that. Yeah, because if you remember, what's that guy's name? O'Keefe. Uh, that 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 went into the uh, Planned Parenthood places uh -huh. and and scammed them uh, and, and the, that was three oh, yeah. of three three undercover. years undercover yeah they yeah. were undercover with video and yeah and then, and then uh, all of a sudden they come out with this uh, this idea that they they were selling the parts of the of the, of the <laughs> aborted fetus yeah. now this is to me that was that w should have been the the uh, the impetus of the exit of Planned Parenthood as a as a uh, as a viable uh, uh, pseudo uh, government agency because that's what they are. I mean, they're getting a billion and a half dollars a year uh, from the federal government, which is against the law. It's against the the uh, the uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, the the uh, uh, the it's it, well it's uh it's it's uh, uh I can see the uh the senator now uh but anyway it's against that law that was made when they when they passed the uh the law that says abortion that right. abortion was a, was a right seventy three on seventy three right. that Hy the Hyde Amendment oh yeah that's what that that uh, is against it's right. against the Hyde Amendment and so once we uh, we we recognize that again it shows you that the 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 the, uh, the callous uh, just dismissal of law in this country is 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 a is a regular thing by the Democrat Party well it's they, cor it's corrupt to take. Yeah. taxpayers money like ours millions of people out there don't believe in abortion and we're paying for it through Planned Parenthood yeah taking taxpayers money that don't believe in it and using it to slaughter babies in the womb yeah and you know? and then profit from it right and 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 the only thing that I say is it, at least if you uh, were going to put this money to Planned Parenthood I think that you should make some of that money available for some of the struggling women's clinics that are doing the the real hard work of uh, of assisting mothers yeah. after they have had these uh, these ch children that might have been aborted. These clinics are all over the place, and they do a tremendous job of helping, but they are so sorely underfunded. I mean, this all done. By uh, by the, the the good of of people that uh, that have the interests of, of of the right to life movement mm -hmm. and and so yeah I think that every dollar that Planned Parenthood gets if they're going to insist on doing it they ought to send a dollar to these 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 established clinics and give uh, pregnancy uh, centers that yeah exactly. support women who are pregnant but you know I mean. You you can't get them to give a a dollar to 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 that type of a thing here, yeah. and I and I fault in my estimation I I fault this this movement of Black Lives Matter and Wall Street uh, uh, and all of this, all of these organizations that run around every time. Uh, there is a, a death by, at the hands of the law enforcement agencies that they want to make it out like this country is is going and using uh, the police to to cause genocide on on black people, and that is and, and that in itself is is a is a, I mean just a, the the some of the worst thing that you can do. I mean, cause like who in the in their right mind. Would would believe that uh, that that you could kill enough people with the police force in a situation that could be an accident. It could be um, it could be uh, you know a, a cop is having a bad day. I mean, and there just might be a bad cop. So how is that uh, fomenting? Genocide. How is that possible? Well, this is the real see. genocide. Right yeah, here. this is the real uh, genocide. The, the real genocide. And in 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 addition, you, you know, 
in, in addition to the party parts that's being so, yeah. uh, we know that, that the Democrats, uh, we know that liberals, that, that, that Planned Parenthood is all of, also all about uh, changing the demographics of, uh, of this country. Uh, it's They've about, done it. It's about, you know, we got, you know, 60 million uh, children that's missing right now that would have bought cars, carpet, uh, that would contribute to Social Security, Medicaid, and well, so on. Well, how about and so funding forth. the schools? And funding the schools. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it yeah. was just, I was just, exactly. uh, I didn't even get in the conversation. I noticed it did just misguided. Uh, but, you, you know, a guy was just talking about how. And his area where you live at, that, you know, the schools are shrinking down more and more. They have to close these schools. Well, that's because, uh, remember, um, uh, that there was a baby boom. Of course, that was, uh, they, they, they considered that from 1944 to 1964. But then after that, uh, you know, this is when Planned Parenthood started to get a little bit more um, uh, ground in the, in the country. And and so families are having uh, are having less children now. Yes. And so we have a we have a lower replacement rate, and we know that this lower replacement well, it's, it's, rate is shown graphically mm -hmm. in in, uh, in cities like Detroit. Yeah. I mean, you hear them talking constantly about uh, the fact that you know the schools are, are underfunded they're underfunded because you don't have you don't have the, the funding the, the of, people uh, the children there. yeah i mean they're the, the ones the that, adults in the communities yeah. uh we, we of course we know that you know uh, in the in the city of Detroit, they used to have one what what was it uh two million people now they down to eight hundred thousand yeah. seven hundred thousand probably less than that well it's, I've been, and, yeah and so uh and, and they're still trying to run a uh, run a city based on those numbers and you can't and do based that. on that funding and then they complain about the fact mm. that the uh the charter schools are taking money it's that, not the charter yeah. schools is taking no it, but the, but the fact is that 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 they refuse to look at what the real problem that's is. right the real problem is that that uh you you have bargained away yeah your your uh your source of funding yeah. Yeah. because of the fact that that uh, you have accepted this idea that you're going to somehow make your the population of Detroit wealthy by aborting the the, mm -hmm. the very thing that you're using to fund yeah. the city. With. And so this is where, the, like you, you was talking about earlier, those sanctuary cities come in. Yeah. Uh, is that uh, they now they bring in it, they seeded the. the because of these numbers, they need to replace these people, and that's where all these, uh, these illegals what? come in. That that, that they what? use and now those. they're they're angry mm -hmm. at, at 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 the uh, Congress and Trump because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're they're uh, talking about taking away that money that they could deduct and send back to the cities, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, uh, for income taxes, you know, with mm -hmm. the tax cut because those sanctuary cities. Are, are basically funding the sanctuary city with the federal government, with the money that the federal government yeah. sends yeah, all back on social programs. Taxes. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So well, you take a look at how many people in Detroit are probably on assistance, welfare and stuff, yeah. compared to people working. You took all the jobs that have been destroyed over the years yeah. by a bad economy and making it so difficult to... to uh, start a business and, I, and maintain I'm, a business they just leave yeah so you got to go a lot of people are just going where the jobs are yeah. they're not going to detroit because you know it's unfortunate because uh, they've destroyed a lot of that you know well folks we have just scratched the surface and uh, we will get back to you next week and uh, there will be more hard-hitting evidence that uh, that we need to more Trumpism. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, we will see you next week, folks. The Abolitionist Roundtable invites the Wham Talk 1600 listeners to continue the roundtable discussions by mailing correspondence to Art of Michigan, Post Office Box 135, Garden City, Michigan, 48135. Or follow Phil and Dell at artofmichigan.com. You can also send emails to artofmichigan at hotmail.com. And most of all, continue to listen every Saturday and tell a friend.